Let's say that you are using generic data type inside your Rust code. When you compile a contract, the part that is using generic data types will go through a process called monomorphization. In this video, I'll explain what monomorphization is. Imagine that there is a generic data type called point. Inside the main function, we instantiate two instances of this point. Point instantiated with the concrete type U32 and point instantiated with the concrete data type I32. Now, when you compile this part of the code that uses generic data type, it will go through the process of monomorphization. In simple terms, what monomorphization means is that it will copy and paste the code that is using generics and then replace it with a concrete type. For example, over here we have a struct where the concrete data type is U32. So when this code is compiled, Rust will create a struct specifically made for type U32. In this example, I named it as point underscore U32. And this code will be replaced by the instantiation of this struct. So what you'll get is P0 will be of type point underscore U32. And the struct will be point underscore U32. And the same goes for the generic point with the concrete type I32. A struct, let's call this point underscore I32. And it's going to store I32 and I32. This will be created by the Rust compiler. And this code over here will be replaced by something similar to this. P1 will be of the type point underscore I32, instantiated with the struct point I32. So this is basically monomorphization. We took the generic data type and Rust saw that inside our code there are two concrete types for this generic point. The concrete types are U32 and I32. When the code is compiled, it will create two concrete structs where it holds U32 and point where it holds I32. The same process applies to functions. For example, let's say that we have a function called getX, which will take in a generic point as input and return one of the values. For this example, we will return the field p.x. Now, if you were to call this function getX for p0 and then getX for p1, let's see what happens when this code is compiled. How does monomorphization apply to this function? Similar to what happened to the structs, monomorphization will create a function that deals with concrete types. Inside the main function, it is calling get x, where this type t is u32, and then afterwards it's calling function get x, where this type t is i32. So when the code is compiled, it will create two functions, get x, where the concrete type is u32, and get x, where the concrete type is i32. So these two code, what it's going to be replaced with will be get x u32 and get x i32. So this is a simple example of monomorphization in Rust. It copies the code of the generic code and then it creates the same code replacing this placeholder type with the actual concrete types. Now, as you can see, monomorphization creates a lot of duplicate code. Since it copies and pastes the same code over and over again, replacing the type placeholder with the concrete types. And this results in two things. First is slower compilation time, since there's more code to compile. And second, it increases the size of the binary, since monomorphization can create a lot of duplicate code. But there is also an upside of monomorphization. The upside is that there is no runtime overhead. This is because all generics are manifested into their concrete types. So there's no runtime overhead to figure out which code that Rust needs to execute. So in this video, I explain how generics are handled inside Rust. Code that uses generics in Rust are monomorphized. What it means is that it copies and pastes the code that involves generics and then replaces the type placeholder with the concrete types. Monomorphization increases compilation time and the size of the binary, but has zero impact on the performance of your code. 